Hi there. As I've been working on this way to use Piercing's work and theories to apply to actual life, like I said, I've had to take a step back and realize the mountain ahead I have to climb before I get there. But there's one tenant that started to consolidate, and I did a video about this already, and I'll link to that at the end. It's about taking sides. So the early iteration of this tenant of whatever philosophy I'm piecing together uh, with Piercing's metaphysics of quality as a central point is rather than taking political sides, attempt to see all points of view before making a quality decision. So why does this fit with Piercing? Because the mechanism of quality is to be with the facts and allow the best ones to emerge as Poincaré did. The facts that emerge are the ones that have quality. And remember that quality isn't a thing. It's an ongoing emergence. It's, um, it's personal. It's contextual. It's, uh, it's, it's everything coming together at that time that is the best thing. So what is prescribed by Piercing seems to me, as far as I can tell, is to be in a state of consciousness that allows this emergence. This is a state of peace of mind and caring about what you're doing. So I'd like to elaborate on this. As we find ourselves in the middle of a culture war that just keeps escalating, what is going to pull us out of this probably is something like transcending to, let's just say, the teal level that Ken Wilber is describing in his theory, an integral theory. And this means learning how to step outside of yourself and your opinions and survey the landscape. But what I want to do is talk about this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and this book, The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. I talk about Jonathan Haidt a lot. Um, I think there's several thinkers out there trying to bridge the gap. But Haidt has worked the best for me in this regard in his social intuitionist model. He states that intuition comes first and reasoning comes after a judgment is made in order to justify what you've just said or done to other people and often to yourself. So Haidt calls the emotional responses of the limbic system, that's the, that's the um, level down in your brain um, from the human think or from the um, thinking system, this is the emotional system. And he calls that response, which is the uh, first response, uh, the elephant and the rationality, the higher part of the brain, the neocortex, etc., um, the writer. And this is basically a paradigm shift as to how we view the way we are. Because, you know, um, for a lot of human history, we have seen ourselves, or at least since the Enlightenment, we've seen ourselves as rational creatures. But it's an important paradigm shift, which is why one of the preeminent neuroscientists, uh, Antonio Damasio, called his most famous book the um, Descartes' Error. So it's something like, I am, therefore I reason, therefore I think. So in my last video, I mentioned um, Jonathan Haidt recommending reading um, Dale Carnegie, and I'm going to make a case for that. So. On page 57 of The Righteous Mind, he says, if you want to change people's minds, you've got to talk to their elephants. You've got to use links three and four of the social intuitionist model to elicit new intuitions, not new rationales. So take a look here at the, um, at the map of the social intuitionist model, and you can see what he's talking about. I'll leave it up for a minute. So he goes on. Dale Carnegie was one of the greatest elephant whisperers of all time. In his classic book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Carnegie repeatedly urged viewers or readers to avoid direct confrontations. Instead, he advised people to begin in a friendly way, to smile, to be a good listener, and never say you're wrong. The persuader's goal should be to convey respect, warmth, and an openness to dialogue before stating one's own case. 
Carnegie was urging readers to use Link 4, the social persuasion link, to prepare the ground before attempting to use Link 3, the reasoned persuasion link. And he goes on to say, from my description of Carnegie so far, you might think his techniques are superficial and manipulative, appropriate only for salespeople. But Carnegie was in fact a brilliant moral psychologist who grasped one of the deepest truths about conflict. He used a quotation from Henry Ford to express it. If there's any one secret of success, it lies in the ability to get the other person's point of view and see things from their angle as well as your own. Hmm. Carnegie realized that if we do in fact see things from their angle, our own elephant might be transformed as well. And that may be what people are afraid of. Uh, it feels awfully good to be right. In fact, um, to be as open as he prescribes takes us out of the righteous mind and possibly into that state that, that uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance describes in the Gumption to Chautauqua. And I'm going to use now this book, the uh, guidebook to Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, really good book, to, um, I'm going to quote from that to describe the state of mind. When through caring and peace of mind we allow quality to stimulate and guide the fusion of subjectivity and objectivity into creative discoveries and illuminating creations. And I'll be using that quote again, I'm sure. So one time long ago, before the Cultural Wars, we had something called good manners. Good manners have what Piercing would deem social quality. So let's bring them back. And, and the Dale Carnegie book is a very good primer to begin with that. So I'm going to put a link to a blog I wrote about this a couple years ago uh, on my website, and I'm, I'm still building the website. There's a lot missing, including rough transcripts of all these videos, but I'm working on it. So I hope that made sense, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.